Good day ladies and gentlemen, how are we all diddling? Feedback from the 1 from 70 range was really positive, so firstly, thank you all very much for that. So, we're going to be back at it, getting from level 1 to 75 magic. Should you be so kind as to show your appreciation by slapping an early like on the video, it really does go a long way and I'd really appreciate it. We finished 70 range with a touch over 20 mil. We bought ourselves some new threads and some basic magic gear, but that's enough yammering on, let's get geared and back into the rev caves. Naturally, the only spell we were able to use, first of all, was Windstrike. This is an extremely weak spell, and the healing mechanic of the Revenants meant that I was never actually going to be able to get a kill with this spell, not even on the Imp. I guess I could have used Water or Earth Strike to try and get the kill, but 1 to 13 magic only takes about 10 minutes, so we were just effectively splashing on it with Air Strike until we hit the 13 magic and we were able to use Fire Strike. Um, <laughs> what the bloody hell is that? As you can see uh, from the chat box, and the looting bag's got nothing in, we've just hit 14 magic, that's like kill 2 or 3, and it's just dropped the 1 mil emblem. That is, um, yeah, that's an insanely good start. And here we have level 17 Magico, that means we can use our first Chaos Rune spell. What is actually happening? An 8 mil emblem, it, from the last, the last one from 170 range, we got 2 of those. We've just had another one, but that's from the Goblins. We moved from the Imp to the Goblins when we got the Chaos Rune spell, but that's so rare from Goblins, even Scold. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but uh, if there's any good YouTube should, I'll look it up and hopefully remember to put it on screen, but wow. We're 22 magic, we've had two emblems, we've made 9 mil from 1 to 22 magic. <laughs> that is bonkers. Oh, here we go, we've got in a tussle. Um, he's level 65, so we're only a couple away. I do have to be careful in case he brings out a special weapon or something. Um, I don't really know why I'm attacking back with magic. I'm just thinking if I can try and make him eat, but I'm not going to with this spell, am I? I think my best bet is just going to be to run, so hopefully we'll just be able to get away. It's only a couple of levels. We've got a full inventory of food, so should be okay on this one. Ah, damn, he caught that final entangle. Um, I think as long as we tank this entangle, he doesn't seem to have any melee, and if he only has range of mage, he pretty much... Has zero chance of KOing me, he says, as he gets smashed in the face with a 22. Okay, um, this should be good. I can't imagine he's going to get another... In Flipping heck, he's caught another entangle. He's really making the most of these couple of wieldy levels. Okay, let's uh, let's, let's, let's just eat there, shall we? Um, yeah, now I... Jesus Christ, okay. <laughs> that was a little bit close. He is tearing through me, but uh, we have... Yep, yeah, we got ourselves away. Um, level 65... And we'll drop in the ease. You, 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 you got to taunt these people. People get annoyed by people attacking them. I don't really. It's part and parcel of the wilderness. But the thing I like about being attacked is you learn something every time. Now what I learned from this is if he was sort of late 50s to earlier 60s, he'd actually have a chance of killing me there. And I need an escape. And my escape is going to be uh, the Chaos Altar. It's in about level 10 wilderness, I think, and I'm only in like level 20 wilderness when I'm killing the Revenant Goblins. You're able to enter it even when Teddy blocks, which you want the Enclave, so for now, that's what we're going to be using as the escape. You really can't script that, boys. As we bought the Chaos Tiara, we need the Chaos Tiara. As I said, you learn something every time. What did I learn this time? Well, the guy was the same level as me, which doesn't mean that I'm defenseless, because I got 70 range. So I'm going to buy some Dragon Knives, because they hit really fast and really hard, and I have the potential of poisoning. Players that are a similar level to me, I'm actually going to give a bit of a battle back, because also, even if I can't kill them, whilst they're eating, they can't be attacking me. We had a cheeky little sausage trying to tell me to telly or log away so he could easily kill me. And I'm there like, mate, either we dance or we don't. But I'm not logging just because you told me to. Well, we went and learned ourselves another little lesson, didn't we, boys? When a much bigger, stronger, higher level tells you to log out, you log the fuck out. We're just about to grab ourselves the next magic level, which is going to be level 35, which is going to be the level for the fireball, even though it scammed me of the message. Now we had access to Firebolt, I figured I'd try and kill the Pyre Fiends, and it went 
absolutely awfully. We splashed a ton and we quickly realised that Firebolt was just not going to cut the mustard. When we hit 41 magic we tried again with the first death rune spell and it was much the same, lots of splashing and we suddenly realised that the earlier magic levels is certainly proving much tougher than the earlier ranged level to get some decent kills. What? The 16 million emblem! We've had the 8 and the 16 from goblins, they are so rare what is going on what is this accounts rng honestly the amount of emblems we've had that have been higher level is just absolutely bonkers decent looting bag as well even before that one let's run that to the bank we are making some serious serious dollar when we get back to the range eventually we'll almost definitely be able to afford the crossbow now wow 46 magic and we've made what like 25 mil just been TB'd by this guy. He's only level 55, but he's obviously got access to Teleblock. I wonder what his range level is. He's actually not, well, he's six combats level, which I guess can be quite a bit at this level. Turns out, at this combat, six combat levels can make a huge difference. I knew from looking him up, he had low HP, so I was able to make him eat my knives, which made his DPS slightly less, but he had really, really high range of mage. Pair that with the fact I knew he could use Granite Mole. If we learned anything from earlier, is get my ass out of there. We did manage to get the escape on this occasion, which felt really good versus someone with those stats. Coming in with level 50 magic here, and we're about to do something that's a little bit fun, but probably foolish. And that is, purchase a Tome of Fire. Playing an account lots of the wilderness for a few years, I've never used one of these in my life, but I do know it increases your fire damage by 50%, which really is huge. I'm hoping this DPS increase will allow us now to move on to the Pyre Fiends. Why is it stupid I hear you exclaim? Well, I'm now risking over 2 million golden pennies on a level 49 in the Deep Wilderness. Christ, 2.3 mil. That is a naughty bit of risk on a low level like this, this Deep in the Wilderness. But let's see how it goes. Okay, that's actually pretty huge. So with the Tome paired with the Avarice... The Firebolt Max has gone from a 12 to a 21. There we go, Pyrefiend down, and though it wasn't the easiest kill, we can now kill Pyrefiends with the Firebolt. My Christ, that was a close one. Caught the TB, but not the Entangle. Uh, managed to run south before he could even get an attack off. But at this level, you can literally get maxed out pures that would absolutely smash my face in with a big granite maul. Oh shit, I'm playing um, Wildenator and this account at Revenants. Um, a <laughs> little bit dodgy. Level 35. I am absolutely not being bullied by a level 35. Who the hell does this guy think he is? Yes, I'll have a little slice of this cake, please, buddy. We could actually get the KO here, I think. Um, oh, he got the teleport. That's really frustrating. At that combat, there's no way he would have had protect home. Could have been a Debo, but uh, yeah, at least we didn't die. We weren't paying much attention there. We had another PK get on us, and honestly, the Parthenes are in such deep wilderness that really high levels can attack us, and if they were slightly lower levels, they'd be able to chase us quite far down. I didn't feel comfortable at all up at the Pyrefiends on this account, so I kind of decided that it was probably worth getting slower kills on our way to 59 Mage before we get more efficient kills, and just go to the Hobgoblins. The Hobgoblins is much closer to the uh, Chaos Altar Escape, also it's less deep in the wilderness, so lower levels can attack me. So uh, yeah, this was the kind of final straw before I thought Pyrefiends really just aren't worth it. Oh, that's kind of a nice level to see coming in, that's going to be at level 60 hit points. High hit points on this account is really nice to see because it means I'm less KOable with special weapons. Just about to hit ourselves level 55 Magique, always an iconic one for the high level alchemy. Normally I've done that previously on Pures over the years, so a really boring way just like teleporting to Lumbridge, Falador, Varrock over and over and over, rinse and repeat. So doing something like this really makes it a lot more fun. Ah, I see. It would appear we have just died. Good fight 2.5 mil. Time to buy the goodies back. Obviously, you don't have to be risking 2.5 mil to be able to do this. We did get very nicely lucky with the emblems at the start and made like 25 mil. So, you know, I'm just kind of figuring why not. It was a mistake on my behalf. I'd sat too low HP, so he's able to just log in and gmail me. So we'll watch out for that from now on, and I'll just try paying a little bit more attention, and hopefully we won't let that happen again. Right then, well, as I am revving on two accounts, I've just had Wildenator crashed by a pure account, so we're about to log in underneath him um, and see if we can't just kill him, because he's a really low level. Just going to use the specials and hopefully be able to kill him. There we go. He's down, level 45 down. Um, guess that's what you get for, for, for crashing me, Wildenator, and uh, yeah, it's a few GP, a couple of hundred K on the floor there. 
A first guy to meet me on Rev Slayer 3. So a little shout out to this guy. That's quite nice to see as we've only just made the one video on him. Um, he said he really enjoyed the video. It's doing really well. So thank you guys very much for that. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a good idea to stop and speak to people in the wilderness, particularly when they can attack you. But no, this guy was friendly and it was nice to have a little chat to him. We are going to have a really nice level coming in here. Who is this guy? Don't remember really me. Please, mate. It's going to be at level 59 magic for the Fire Blast. This is going to be a huge upgrade. It's going to be our final spell we use before we hit the 75 magic. Really intrigued to see what this can max out at. Oof, 28. That is large. I actually somehow missed a level, but as you can see, level 60 magic in the chat box there. That's going to be our final gear upgrade, which is going to be the Mage Arena 1k. But we're going to go and do straight away now, I think. And then I think that will be our final gear until we get to 75. I lied. We're actually going to make two more gear upgrades. The one from the Magic Training Arena, the Master one, the Teacher one, and the Apprentice one, are all a little bit more expensive than I wanted to be spending because we're already risking a fair chunk. The beginner one, however, that I personally think looks the best, is only a couple of hundred K. The magic bonus on it is only plus five, which isn't fantastic. However, the attack speed is a much bigger upgrade. We go from a five tick elemental staff to a four tick wand. If anybody would like to replicate this kind of account, which isn't particularly hard to do, I'd go for the ones at a much earlier magic level to make it slightly quicker for yourself. The second being Wizard Boots. Now this really isn't a particularly vital upgrade and I definitely prioritise things like the wand and the tome over this. However, as I said, we have made a decent chunk of money and they're less than 200k. If I die, I may not rebuy these, but for now we're going to have a bit of fun and take the Wizard Boots as well. Mage Arena 1 was incredibly easy. I knew there was a safe spot. I wasn't exactly sure where it was, but I found one very quickly. There is a lot of skeletons on the ground you can just trap the NPCs behind. Being magic based NPCs, I had no idea why they can't attack you back, but I guess that's the charm of doing content that was created in 2003. That was actually the year I started playing, so quite a nostalgic year for me. Yep. 20 years ago boys how crazy is that we really have grown up with this game i still remember doing it for my first time and it just being so difficult so uh yeah a real kick of nostalgia in this one tell you what boys for a level 49 this is looking quite spicy isn't it? i really do like that one with the little stick some nice magic bonuses there too as well for a low combat level risking 2.5 mil more or less probably closer to 2.7 sort of 2.8 by the time you take the pages and effort into account so uh Let's keep our wits about us, go destroy some revenants, and hopefully not die. Oh, that was a close one, boys. 10 HP left. No food. Um, I did a few little bits there that probably kept me alive. So we're just going to quickly go over that because it might help you boys out. And I kind of want these ones to be a bit of an informative ones if you guys want to make an account like this. The first one being, as soon as he hits a 21 and we drop to 20 HP, I know he's going to go in for the spec. So you eat some combo food. It's vital and even more vital on a low level account to be making sure that you've got some combo food to eat. The second is to grab the snare. As you can see, we are right next to each other, but we get a nice bit of gap. When you get X amount of tiles away, the snare effect will dwindle, so he will be able to come after you. However, you'll be able to get a nice bit of gap getting the snare. It's no point trying to do the snare and log out because it only holds for 10 seconds. You'd have to be absolutely tick perfect and he wouldn't be able to get last hit, which really is just incredibly challenging to do. This is a much better option. The final thing is whilst we're in range is attacking him. We haven't got to think about overheads on this account because we'll run prayer so we can focus on attacking him. As you can see we forced him to eat there which meant his hit was delayed which meant that he wasn't able to get us. Had of that hit not been delayed he probably would have hit our final 10 HP. Let me know if you find these breakdowns useful and you know I'll probably do them from time to time because I know people get wary within the wilderness so it's just to sort of help out a little bit. I'm not doing any game breaking mechanics or anything you know super challenging or anything like that. It's just you know showing you guys how ordinarily you may die if you don't do some of these things. I'm a slither little snake snag. I'm so slither and sneaky because I'm a snag. 
Well, remember I said it's important to learn. Well, what I learned from that is on Pure's Firebolt hits really, really hard, and that's what does the bulk of his damage. So I decided to drop the stamina potion. So here I'm just testing whether I've got enough run energy to get from the Hobgoblins to the Kelsolter. Turns out I had plenty of energy, I had about 50 left. So what we did is we dropped the stamina potion and took a anti-dragonfire potion. We're being attacked by a lower level, so I'm just going to use our knives. I have no idea what this man's doing. He's like the combat 30 trying to attack me if we can get the KO. Got the KO. Um, was that man lost? What was he even trying to do? Whoa, there's an amulet of avarice in there. And a load of deference. That's actually a really nice PK. That's going to be over a milli to the bag. Risking an avarice, 3k deference. What on earth was that man thinking? When we ran into a PK using Dragonstone Bolts, we soon realised that we weren't able to use our Antifire Potion. We weren't able to use it because I think it was a botting measure. Jagex added it so you had to have started Dragon Slayer 1. Now obviously you could get 32 quest points and start that quest and then use it I believe. I don't believe you've got a finish or anything. However, we're not going to do that. We're just going to sort of roll with the punches. But yeah, kind of annoying. But uh, it did give us a little idea. People like to build low level pures quickly, so there's a good chance if I'm not going to get the 32 quest points that other people aren't going to. We did have a quick look at the price of the dragon crossbow, but that's just a bit silly to be risking. So we're just going to take a rune crossbow and some dragonstone dragon bolts and bolt people back because there's a good chance that we might be able to lay some dragon fires too. Sometimes you can get things right and still die. Unfortunately, this was one of those occasions. As you can see from this previous hit, 25 was max. He hit a double 23. What are you going to do, boys? What are you going to do? Sometimes you just have to accept that you did your best, but it just wasn't good enough. Probably time you started to eat those two Quan Bombs. Yep, definitely time to eat those two Quan Bombs in your inventory. Why aren't you eating the Quan? Can we get a full refund on our fucking eyes, please? Because we clearly don't need them. This bit's always a little bit painful. That's two quick deaths in fairly quick succession and five mil down the drain. We are very, very fortunate. We got so lucky near the start of the video. So we're still very much in the green. But let's not continue to let this happen. Nice. 70 magic! 6 U seeds, one of the rarer drops, that's the same rarity as the lower level emblems. I refuse to believe that this man in a black full hand blue D high chaps is picking a fight. Thanks for coming, I'll be claiming your entrance fee. This is possibly why you don't have revenant on two accounts, we're currently getting attacked on both accounts, um, neither of which have teleblocked us or anything, so I'm just going to run away on this and that's like I'm defenceless. And then we're going to run away on Wardenator and just get him teleported out of the cave so we can deal with this little ranger because we've got a better chance of killing him. Let's just teleport back to the Varrox Enclave on that account. Right, whilst I just get myself healed up, potted up and all that sort of stuff, I'm going to act like I'm very, very worried about this man. And then I'm probably going to turn around and slap his head in. So let me see if he... Yep, yeah, that's a revenant you just clicked. Is he going to teleport? No, he's not. Thank you very much, mate. See you later, feet slave. 72 magic, just three levels away from the 75 goal. These accounts are bots, and whenever you log in on these, they instantly run away and teleport. This one hasn't, which makes me think that it's potentially broken. It's not teleporting, it's not doing anything, it just kind of stood there. Um, well, good fight, I guess. Yeah, bot down, nice and easy. Oh, and we got his avarice, which means that it wasn't protect an item. Not really sure what happened there. Possibly either logged out or just a broken bot. Five magic seeds, still not a single emblem from these hobgoblins, although I really shouldn't complain with our earlier RNG. This clip just goes to show, fight back with everybody. This guy was a much higher level, but we were just bolting him down and knifing him down. We were hugging the rock so he wasn't able to firecast us like he was trying. And eventually, we made him teleport. I actually quite like getting crashed on Wardenator by Pures now because it gives me the opportunity to log on this Rev account. Now he's got his stats up, log underneath and knife them out. And on this occasion, we did it again. He wasn't protecting an item, so another Avarice. So really, we're just reclaiming all the Avarice from last episode we lost. We found another one of those bots doing absolutely nothing, just stood around. So yeah, there's some sort of way that they've either been broken or they're lagging out or something. But whatever, we've got some very upset bot owner and we've just claimed ourselves yet another Amulet of Avarice. I feel like we've had an absolutely huge journey in the caves, getting from level 1 to 75 magic. We've seen all sorts in here. But here it is, level 75 magic. That is the goal for this episode. However, there is one more fairly big goal that we still need to tick off. And that is, of course, Major Arena 2 for the upgraded cape. I've never done this on a pure account, and I've certainly never done it on a one prayer account. 
But firstly, we had to learn the ability to use all three god spells outside of the arena. I found the easiest way to do this was to splash after getting a safe spot. I ran around like a headless chicken for about 5 minutes trying to look for a safe spot, but I find you could safe spot behind the followers of the relevant spell you were using, or you could wait 10 minutes for them to do the aggro and then safe spot them behind the skeletons. The first boss we found was Derwin, who represents Guffix. These bosses are all in random locations, so you just need to find something you can hug. The wilderness is full of debris, so just find something. On this occasion, we were able to get a gate. The healing orbs of this boss were a little bit annoying as it made it harder to hug things, but we did eventually manage to get him down. This may or may not have been our third attempt. The second god we found was Zami, whose name I don't wish to try and pronounce. I didn't look up any guides, but I had previously, and something at the back of my mind told me Zami and Sara I didn't want to get too close to the bosses. Again, this one was near a gate, and as it worked so well on Guthix, we decided to go for the same approach, and actually managed to get this down on the first time. Lastly, it just left Justica Zachariah. These fights were pretty damn tough on this account, made even more so by the fact we didn't have the level for the charge spell, and we have no overheads. But all of that added together made them honestly pretty good fun to kill as we had to find little ways to do each of them. There we go, handing in the final remain. We're going to imbue the Zamorok cape, and yes, I would like to imbue the cape. She's a beauty. The Saradoman one does look really cool as well. I just think the Zamorok's more in keeping with the wilderness vibe. Time to sell the loot off. We did have to earlier sell the 8 million emblem to fund some of the supplies and deaths we had, but we still have over 30 mil in the tab, so in total we made nearly 40 mil in loot. We will get into how much of that was raw profit, but really nice loot tab to see. Considering how challenging the Major Arena 2 cape was to get for us, we did decide to spend some of our profits on imbuing the cape. In total we spent about a mil on the parchment and 500k on the imbue. But, I do have to say, the account do be looking rather juicy. It really is nice knowing this is all completely self-funded and just looking at the spoils of the profit when you get to the end of it. So here's the final stats. We start the episode with 20 mil and we're ending with 44. We got about 40 mil in loot, 35 mil of that was from the Revenant drops themselves and we got about 5 mil in PKs. This means we spent or lost about 16 mil in the progress of the account. I believe about 9 million of that was in deaths and the other 7 was in runes and ether and things like that. Still a very, very tasty 24 mil profit for a skill that normally costs you money. I had a blast making this one, so if you enjoy watching these type of videos, please do make sure you leave a like to let me know and sub if you're not already. And who knows, if you guys are still enjoying it all the way down the road, we may end up getting this skill completely maxed out pure. And as always, an absolutely massive thank you to my YouTube members. It's a really nice way to support the channel if you're able to. So a big thank you to Big Popper Air. K -k 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 Can you see it's Mr. Pancakes, ELUW2, 202 mil, Ian Beatty, Jacob Brooks, Carsten, and the new name on the list with SpiderKill93. If you spend any time in the CC, you'll know exactly who that is. He is a hardcore Iron Man enthusiast that likes completing things in the wilderness. Thank you all very much. I hope you all have a phenomenal weekend. And until next time, goodbye.